Good evening and welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly 5th Edition D&D Livestream Campaign. And my name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I am Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we are joined today by our good friends. Bill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe Gorman playing Wrath, the Azamar Warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, welcome! We are the Dungeon Dudes, and we play D&D here every Tuesday night on Twitch, as well as create videos on our YouTube channel, where Kelly and I post videos uh, every other Tuesday and every Thursday, covering everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So please check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And of course, you can always find us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube, which go up the following Friday. And also on Friday, the episodes go up as a podcast for those of you who want to listen along. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. And for those of you that may, may be interested in one day playing along, you'll be very excited to know that Dungeons of Drakenheim Season 1 of our campaign is coming to Kickstarter this summer. Uh, we, Kelly and I, are hard at work working on our very first hardcover book for 5th uh, edition, which will be covering all the events of the very first Drakenheim campaign. Um, if you want to explore the ruins of Castle Draken, battle against the Executioner and the Lord of the Feast and confront uh, the top of the clock tower in Drakenheim and run your own adventures class with the factions, you'll be able to do that. Um, so you should check it out. Uh, it's coming this summer, as I said, and all the details are on our mailing list are up at drakenheim.com. With that, though, let us return to the shadows. Drakenheim is no more. For 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that first place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back! To the shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath, they had set out once again from the port of Dransmund towards the mysterious lighthouse, a massive elven ruin just off the shores of Ash Bay. Ash Bay, of course, is the um, the endpoint for the infamous Dran River, the river which deposits its which runs all across the lands of Westmar and deposits its water from Drakenheim out into the ocean, and thus the bay has now become a scene of corruption, where the haze itself has begun to manifest over the bay. Our heroes are investigating these strange events that have led them here to this strange elven ruin, not dissimilar in construction from the previous ones that they found in the marshes south of Ash Bay, but much larger and grander in scale. This massive tower had no entrances on the ground level, and but, but our heroes did manage to find two entrances outside. One was trapped by lightning bolts, uh, the other they found opened, but already occupied by a group of the awful aquatic creatures that are thrall to this creature that they've known only as the Duchess. Um, breaking in, our heroes managed to seize control of a delirium-afflicted wyvern um, and battle against the uh, the fish folk and seize this topmost level 
of the tower. Now, as the wyvern that they befriended devours the corpses of its former fish folk masters, our heroes plot their next move. What will you do? What will we do? Well, I mean, we can either go catch those guys or we can hightail it down the other way. There's lots of options. We just Should we act quickly and get them? Well, we need to find the, um, the cardinal and uh, the, they might be up, they might be down. Is there Are there staircases going both up and down? That- so in the level that you are currently on from where you you are um the there is a broad spiral staircase uh that that gently goes it's about f- five feet wide and it heads down so you can see um right up over here is this spiral stair that is go- going down there's, there's the broad steps there there are two doors one here and one here, sets of, of wide, broad, double doors uh, that are made of this greenish metal. And then crossing the bridge that you got in from, there's the entrance doors that open up into a uh, a room that you haven't quite inspected because there's a short hallway. But you can see that cut into the center of this room is a spiral staircase that also goes down. And in 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 last game uh there was one of the fish folk that fled down the stairs correct that is correct they two fled down uh, i believe there were two, two. Okay. and they fled down this way well friends we have very mm-hmm. little time to act there will probably be more of them upon us soon so whatever it is that we are going to do we <laughs> need to find the cardinal and we need to find him fast and remember we want him alive so that he can help us locate the Duchess, um, Rudy. I uh, I defer to your judgment here. Well, I mean, they're probably going to be coming up the stairs at any point now. I mean, we could. I mean, there is a wyvern now that is friendly with us, so we could let it do the eating of these fish folk while we explore the other room, or we can charge right in. Just because it's friendly with us doesn't mean it isn't also friendly to the fish folk. It doesn't know who it's enemies are it might just attack it could attack us in a minute for all i know i was able to wrestle control of it but i don't think the beast bitey as i have named it and i um are our best friends yet we're, we're more acquaintances so to speak but there is a possibility that the wyvern could aid us it has a taste for fish flesh now it might be its first course of action. <laughs> that is my hope. You hear the cracking and suckling noise as it chomps down on the skull of one of the fish folk and then just kind of spits out some of the bones. Do you think they taste like fish? <laughs> I The wyvern snorts. <laughs> um there's a there's a downed fish folk by like there, there's a few around us still, right? Like he's feasting oh, there, on some. Oh, there's of them. a lot of corpses here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna take a big honk and leg uh, of a fish folk, um, and uh, and and just and just keep that close by in case we need a we need a lure for old bitey. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna snap off like at the femur. Just <laughs> it's 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 real. It smells bad. <laughs> Into the bag of holding. <laughs> I'll wrap it in a tissue, so not to get stuff everywhere. Is there a door in front of the stairs that go down, or no? Uh, there, both the sets of stairs go down, and there are no doors in front of either. Okay. Um, we should head to the next building. There might be a chance that we can uh, either move up or down a level before they discover us in this place. If we stay here, we're sure to be found, but we can stay on the move and stay one step ahead. All right. I say we move along, and if we come across them, we come across them, but I think if we can find the Cardinal without having to (laughs) go through a a horde of fish folk, then let's do that. Let's do that. Seems reasonable. Very well. Which way would you like to go? I vote uh, west. Go west. West? Okay. 
Let's do it. Okay. And I'm going to use my Pearl of Power to get back a, uh, a third level spell slot. Alrighty, let's show you what you found, fun friends. Okay. So, heading into the Western Tower, the short hallway opens up into a circular dome-like chamber. Um, the the dome overhead corresponds right to the, the top, almost up to the top of the outer part of the building. And inscribed on the ceiling are the constellations. Seems to be some sort of star map. <laughs> the hallway continues out to a uh, another uh, hall, the, and the, the the broad steps descend down uh, a chimney. So quite significantly, like there's as you head down the steps, looking down the steps, there's just wall, a solid sort of granite wall. Um, there's no like overhanger, balustrade, or banister. Right ahead of you. Opposite the wall here, you can now now see that this chamber opens up and around, and before you there is a stone platform. Um, at first glance, it might be a sarcophagi of some kind, um, but it is flat and broad and featureless, with rather sharp edges, aside from a very small uh upward divot partway along uh about a partway along its length so it's about six feet long and the last 18 inches sort of angle very slightly upward there's a very clear clear break in the surface where it just kind of pops up um approaching the stone slab um am i able to having been in a few elven ruins uh, Wilhelm kind of examines it, hoping to surmise uh, what purpose it might serve. Um, well, as you head down the hallway, you actually see that there are dozens more of these oh. um, in in this chamber. Um, it stretches right around, and the the curvature of the chamber, the the map of the constellation continues on the ceiling above, and you can see that each of these stone slabs is uh, symmetrically placed all along either sides of the wall, so far more symmetrically than I placed them in Dungeon Draft. <laughs> um, and, and as you ap approach closer, you can actually see that... Um, the top and bottom of each of these stone platforms actually has a um, a di a large sort of shelf cut into the bottom of it that extends back about a foot underneath of each, um, and some of them have small flecks of dust uh, atop them, uh, small bits of cloth uh, as well. Um, but there are uh, there. And then there's just the thinnest sort of sheens of um, on the walls separating them each. There's ribs across the room that separate, that go between each of the individual uh, stone slabs. Hmm. Uh, the dust, not like delirium dust. We're talking just like... No, actual dust, dust and oh. ash. Yeah. Hooray. I love regular dust. Um What, what do you two make of these stone slabs? Are they are they a resting place for the dead or a storage unit? I mean, is there any any names on them? I don't see any bodies. I, I'm I'm examining the one closest to me. Um, I don't see any carvings or markings to indicate that it like is a grave or a tomb or a sarcophagus. Um, how close are you going to get to it? We're gonna go five feet. Um, there's something it. strange about the air pressure around it. As if the air close to it is thicker than it should be. Uh. <laughs> I have a thought. 
yes anything. it may it may be related to that lightning bolt that lightning rod that we experienced earlier maybe that conduit is it may not be a trap but maybe more of an input um, and these stone slabs might have something to do with it maybe to reflect it but we might need to know more by going around or down or up that's fair do either of you remember the names of the other things that needed to be activated that we saw on the globe because this building seems like a conduit of sorts seems like a giant battery hmm. I'm wondering if it's if this building might I mean it would make sense to relate this building to the ruins that we found elsewhere in Ash Bay that had the globe that said that certain elements were not functioning properly perhaps we need to get this building back online that could be the case I mean, if, if it's broken, maybe there's something indicating where it needs to be fixed so that, you know, after we're done dealing with the Cardinal, we can maybe look into it. But, I mean, they're going to be coming at any moment. Is there anything here we need to... I'll try one more thing and then we can be on our way. And I'm going to back up and I'm going to... Is there like a small pebble or something around? Uh, Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. I pick up a small little rock and I'm just going to throw it at one of the sarcophagi to see what happens. Sure, where are you going to aim? Uh, right here. Uh, cool. Um, you throw the pebble and it stops in midair, landing with a soft sort of whoosh about six inches before above the stone. And then it bobs there for a moment, and then drops. Well, that was weird. Um, shall we carry on? <laughs> There'll be time for investigation. Rudy's right. The, these creatures will be on us shortly. We should either plan our attack or move. Now, do you think we should go down these stairs, or... Uh... Is there a door where Rudy is on the map right now? Uh, no, there is actually no doors there. The Just the open. hallway is 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 solid. Right Rath. from, yeah. Wrath, in your fancy cloak, do you have a door that we can use? <laughs> do where I? You, where are you trying to go? No, I just want to a block off. I was like, Rudy just keeps like I keep looking behind myself and I keep being like. I have a funny feeling that we're going to get, you know, ambushed from both directions. Funny you should mention that. Roll a d6, everyone. <laughs> funny. Yeah, we're just sitting here throwing rocks at sarcophagus. I want to one. apologize. I got a one as well. I got a six. We really turned it around this one, time. One, one, and six. Oh, my Kay. goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, two things happen slightly simultaneously um the the first is that you hear a keening wail shake up the tower from the spiral staircase below it is difficult to determine whether it is it feels like wind r rushes up through here and for a moment it almost when you first hear it it sounds more like it is just a, a screeching gale wind but it continues a little bit too long uh for for that um and then um as you uh also um look upon that as you as you hear that what you see here, let me just grab uh, this, is um, you hear, uh, you, actually, you're too far away to even even hear, uh, hear this. Um, you can all roll me a perception check. Oh, no. Four. Uh, 17. Nine. Four, 17, and nine. 
Okay. So, Wilhelm, you see, um, a you glance around your shoulder as Rudy speaks these words, looking back around your shoulder to the staircase, uh, uh behind you, um, where you see coming up from the the steps is a monstrously mutated fish-like creature. It is probably 10 feet tall, um, and it has its entire body is covered in deep blue scales and razor-sharp fins. Its mouth uh, uh, and around its uh, face are the whiskers like a catfish and a mohawk-like fin, and it has broad uh, muscular arms that are covered in fish scales, and it's carrying a trident on a hook. Um, and as it as it comes up the stairs, uh, you can see that uh, it resembles some of the larger cr- uh, creatures that you encountered once before, I believe. Um, this marrow. Um, and as it comes up the stairs, uh, you can see that its uh, lower section, which might you, you might have seen these ones previously with a fish-like lower section, this one has more humanoid limbs and is walking up the stairs uh, towards you. And as it, as it sees uh, the uh, the wyvern, it has its trident and the chain, and it's guarding and it's lower the trident and the chain as it starts approaching towards the wyvern. What do you do? Hide. Wrath the door would be good anytime. <laughs> you have a spell for that or something? Um. Where where are we putting a door to? Do you, uh, Rudy? I think wants me to put a door right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to like block it. But has this creature noticed us? Don't think um, so. Okay, in that case, you can all make a stealth check. <laughs> Get down. 22. 22. Nine. <laughs> okay, uh, I got a... I got a seven. So, in fact, you have all managed to hide yourselves uh, just as Wilhelm noticed it. Nope. What are you going to do? I'm going to go around here. Run. Run? I start I start trying to I, I peek around the corner and I'm trying to give you guys hand signals. <laughs> uh, a second one comes up the stairs. Uh, and it, as it as it sees them eating uh, the other fish folk, they slowly begin approaching the uh, the the wyvern uh, with with their uh, scaly hands out, um, almost like you know you know how when you've got an animal that is eating a meal and you can kind of very carefully approach it and start to try to collar it. These two larger creatures are coming forward uh, to to try to do that. Are you guys going to run or engage? Run if we don't have anything to block them. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No one's got any ideas? I'm like inching closer to the stairs like, are we going boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I get get it. Are we going? Down. (laughs) Down. All right. Okay. All right. And then as soon as that happens, just start running down the stairs. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna lightly run stealthily okay. run to the stairs. Alright. The group of you all rush down the stairs. Okay. It's fine. Just leave the room. Okay. Well let's uh let's see how this this plays out for you guys. Okay. Um you descend a very, very very long spiral staircase. Um, uh, I, I would I would call it unexpected. This, this staircase, um, uh, this this staircase goes down a lot further than you might might have expected it would, um, and so it goes far enough that it's not entirely clear by the end of it 
uh, how far down the tower you've descended, for there are no windows uh, al along the way. Um, it's it's possible you might have descended lower than the other door, at least several hundred feet. Um, you're almost enough that like you'd be kind of winded by the end of uh, of this. Nevertheless, you come to the bottom of of the stairs, where the staircase deposits you uh it opens the chimney opens up into a 30 foot high chamber and the staircase then comes out of the chimney into a wider circular chamber it kind of flares back back out again and then opens into uh there's no light down here either but i guess that's not a concern for any of you is it anymore i goggle i could see much better okay As you come down the stairs, you uh, appear in a um, at the base of this uh, slightly square shaped room. Um, and before you is a set of. Uh, but what happens is the the room ends and you can see before you with your your dark vision that as the room extends out, there's a lip here that just drops off um because you can see it as you're descending down the stairs and what you can see is that there is a ah, i need more reveal tools okay no not conceal reveal <laughs> um you can see that there is another circular chamber with nine pillars reaching up to a domed ceiling. The interior is the same granite stone material that the rest of the building is composed of, but then this area that you're looking at down here, um, as you came down the stairs, it wasn't clear how deep the floor was from here. It, it, the floor was beyond the edge of your dark vision, but this floor is, is level with the bottom of the stairs itself. Um, and what you now see before you is a, um, a pedestal with a square monolith atop it that is covered in all manner of elven runes, all of which are circular and hovering in midair. Um, there's, there's approximately 12 of them that dot the front face of this obelisk that is made of obsidian and roughly perhaps uh 12 feet tall and up on a on a set of steps there's a double door here and there is a pillar uh th then there's the this nine pillars out over here uh, am i the only one who reads elvin here we've established that yeah I'll, at some uh, time i can read anything but well, i don't know if we have that we don't have years for you to learn <laughs> elvin rap you know <laughs> We, 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 Bruce can teach me. It takes about ten minutes plus one action ish, and I can understand any language. You learn so quickly. Wow! I wish I had that skill. It's mostly Bruce. He just yeah. translates for me. I had to study Elven for about ten years before I even managed to understand the intricate dialect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I interestingly enough, all twelve of these circles. Um, are filled with elven runes, but they also are sectioned themselves into seven equally sized sections, of which in within each is a different color of the rainbow, going red, yeah, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, then blue, then indigo, then violet, and so all of them. Uh, the the full thing is so it kind of forms this ring of the of the colors, and then, it, but the all the rings have turned white, so the because it's only upon closer inspection and reading the elven runes that you can see the colors are specified uh, and broken down like this because when you first come down, all the colors together your vision combines them into uh, white basically. Um, I'm going to approach the pedestal, but not actually walk onto the platform. Like, I just kind of hmm. creep up the stairs, and I'm going to try, I'm like looking up at this tablet, and I'm going to try to make sense, if I can, of uh, any any instructions or anything that the runes might tell me. Hmm. 
the best you can guess is that these are measuring something. And whatever they are measuring is full. Well, this place is a mystery to me. <laughs> um, we have floaty pads upstairs. We have measurements and pedestals down here. These elven ruins are bizarre. And, and there's an entranceway here? Yes, and then there is a sharp drop 60 feet here to the level below where you can see glittering illumination that is sparkling in various prismatic colors and moving, and the source of the illumination appears to be moving about. It might be down there. What might be down there? Um, I'm going to... Uh... I, cl I kind of my eyes roll in the back of my head and I'm going to move into Bruce's body and he's going to fly on down into the pit. Okay. Uh, in that case, I am going to grab Bruce. Yeah. And bring you down a level lower. And I kind of like put one arm out and brace myself on uh, Wilhelm. Oh, hey. Hey, bud. So just kind of hold me steady. Okay. I'm reading the Elven Ruins and you just slump over into me. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> so Support this is me. what this is what you see below. The chamber opens up into a wide circular chamber. Um upon these nine pillars um are in are engraved a swir various swirling patterns uh, depicting celestial bodies. And as you come down into this chamber, uh, you can see that the celestial motifs that were depicted in the previous chambers continue through uh, in in into here, but then they open up into um, several large murals. Um, and the murals that are on the walls correspond uh, to um, each uh, each sort of break in the different pillars, um, and you see uh, you see painted on the the various murals, um, there are depictions of um, broad landscapes. Um, again, these these murals are carved from stone, um, and so the the various murals. Um, this first mural depicts a vast mountain which rises up um, dwarfing the surrounding landscape uh, there, but uh, the next mural depicts an endless field of forests uh, through which centaurs are actually running the next mural depicts a battlefield upon which alien looking humanoid creatures clad in full plate armor battle each other um, upon great stone fortresses that are almost like siege towers that are colliding into each other the one beside it uh, here um, depicts just a field of gears um, all interconnecting and uh, clocking in with, with one another the field here depicts a, uh, a sea of just roiling chaos and bubbling eyes and tentacles. And the mural that is shown over here um, depicts a vast chasm um, of unfathomable depth that is filled with all sorts of demonic and horrific creatures. Um, and the... Uh, the the rest of the open ones here uh, don't show anything else. Uh, they they continue on, but uh, uh, but what Bruce does see as he comes down here, that is that the uh, hallway. First of all, there's a tiny little door right here, and the hallway continues up like this way, bobbing in this chamber, illuminating illuminating this chamber uh, are a pair of floating spectral skulls awash in prismatic flames. They 
the the skulls appear to be floating between each mural looking at them and then moving on to the next do they notice bruce do they Is even bruce hiding no um okay. he's just sort of openly uh, flying down there then roll a d6 one uh as bruce floats down uh the the creature screeches roll initiative for bruce uh oh i thought they were just so preoccupied um i got a big old uh did it uh 11. uh okay bruce wins initiative what is bruce going to do um it screeches out loud um yeah it does and the prismatic light around it flares outward uh he's gonna bolt it down the bolt it back you know what i'm just gonna make uh i'm gonna make bruce shoot like 60 feet up okay or 40 feet up um he's just gonna bail out of there Alrighty, so bruce flies back up 40 feet Mm -hmm. okay the creature uh screech uh uh, follows in pursuit Uh towards bruce uh (laughs) as does the other one uh and and so too comes a third down the hall um they begin floating back up towards the rest of you and i am just going to pull them over to our other map wait 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 (laughs) And at this mo at this moment, the rest of you can all roll for initiative. Ah! 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 We send Bruce into the darkness, and after like thirty seconds, Bruce just explodes back out, being chased by three flaming skulls. It's it's good. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. Um, it's okay. Rudy. Five. Okay, nice. Wrath? Uh, 22. Wow. Or sorry, 20. Pardon. Not 22. 20. Okay. Wilhelm? 19. Okay. So we will have uh, Bruce act on your turn now. Okay. Uh, Wrath, but we will consider uh, that um, that his, his action for this turn performed. Uh, so what would you like to do now? Um, I actually want to try to realizing that they're chasing him i want him to go back down and and try to lure them away from us uh okay um because <laughs> uh, but but, once, but bruce has already of... bruce has already acted this turn so it's your turn um i'm just i i'm in bruce's brain so i guess i could pull out of bruce and that'll be my action and um yeah that's my turn okay Wilhelm, what will you do? And I'm then I'm going to say, guys, I'm sorry, there's skulls coming. But in I brain. see the flaming skulls burst out of the darkness, and even if Wrath was attempting to drive them away, if I see skulls bursting out of the darkness, I shoot at the skulls. Did, did they break? The did they break the 60 feet? Like, did they, did, are they uh, seen they're by us? They're screaming up, like, we're standing near the <laughs> edge, and they're screaming up towards us, I imagine. Um... <laughs> Can I? We play silly. We play stupid. We just hide. I'm gonna send Bruce back down. Actually, actually, yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to fire. What? How close is the closest one to me? Um, from the edge of the from the lip of the. Oh, I gotta bring you guys back up. I gotta bring us all back up. There we go. Here, that's the situation. There we uh, go. There we go. <laughs> They're thirty feet down. Okay. Face. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm actually going to. Hopefully, this isn't a terrifying obelisk in this room. I'm gonna walk up, and I'm actually gonna press myself against the obelisk, and I'm going to hide. Okay. Give me a stealth check. Uh, that's going to be a 23. Alrighty. Uh, the, the 
floating skulls. Uh, it's their turn. Uh, they shoot laser beams from their <clears throat> eyes at Bruce. <laughs> Getting an uh, 23, uh, 21, and neither above 10. Uh, so two, two hits, two good hits. Uh, Bruce gets lasered for a grand total of 20 points of fire damage. He bursts into flame uh, <laughs> after in a hot pursuit, as you might say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bruce. <laughs> Rudy, Shudder. it is your turn. Okay. <laughs> Do I see Bruce get, like, annihilated? <laughs> uh, from where you are, uh, yeah, you just see Does the he cat, like, the he, he just kind of breaks the surface, and you just see these beams go... <laughs> <laughs> you saw, like, six lasers shoot up. Uh, they're solid white beams, uh, but then, but, like, two came from each uh, of the skulls, and just... <laughs> So I move 10 feet a bit closer. I say, well, I guess Bruce can't lure him. And I shoot a, a firebolt at the one that's uh, here. Okay. It does absolutely nothing to this creature. <laughs> and then I using, using um, war magic. <laughs> I can make one weapon attack as a bonus action, so I'm gonna take my hand axe and I say, oh, that fire doesn't do it. <laughs> Throw my hand axe at it. <laughs> we'll <see>. Okay. <laughs> uh, 15 to hit. Um, as the axe sails towards it, a shimmering field of light casts shield and deflects the axe. Mm. <laughs> All right. <I> <laughs> um, I'm gonna move back towards this door, and I can I just push it and see if it pushes. It pushes. Guys, I think we should. Uh, <laughs> I'm just ready, standing at the door. I'm like, I'm ready when you are. I'm floating skulls of flames that don't get hurt. I don't know, and I'm just waiting. <laughs> Okay, we go to the top of the round with Wrath. I'm gonna book it through the door. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Um, you open the door into a quarter spherical room. Um, this this room um, is filled with discordant motes of energy, uh, as if. Um, it was that for brief moments almost look like star fields in the air, but they kind of r ramp up for a couple seconds and then collapse back down into into nothingness. Um, these strands of energy um, emanating out uh, f um, from a pair of um, emanating out from the floors and ceilings and various emitters in, in the chamber. Um, I will just reveal the area. Oh no, that's con why does it always do conceal? Reveal. There we go. Uh, so that is the the chamber uh, here. Um, as the as the light comes down, so the light pulses and glow glows in this room. And as you see the light come downwards, you can see the shapes of several humanoid forms emaciated and almost almost like as the light dies down it's clinging onto something as, as if water as if the light itself was water being poured over an invisible object good i step i <laughs> i um Joking. Are you? Uh, <laughs> door stairs. Uh, door stairs. It's all go. You do. Door stairs. Flip a coin. Don't ask them. You gotta decide. Okay, I go in the door and I and I'm gonna wait to close it as soon as the last person comes through. Okay. Wilhelm, it is your turn. 
Uh, seeing all this commotion, I see them burst open the door and like these light creatures start to form. There's these screaming skulls that haven't seen me yet. Looking up at this obelisk, do the ruins, do, do the runes on it that are like colored, do they look like buttons? They're floating in the air, but they are slightly tangible. And when you place your hand against them, you feel resistance. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be like, I'm going to try something and I'm going to slam my hand on the, uh, the, the, the purple violet one. Uh, the, um, so you slam, as you slam your hand on it, you almost feel like the resistance of these dials shifts like it's a wheel or a dial that turns. All right. I'm just going to start turning dials to whatever. <laughs> I'm just going turn, turn, turn. I turn the violet one like 30 degrees. I turn the orange one 60 degrees. So, oh, oh, cool. So each of the 12 shapes here, yeah, they are circular. Mm -hmm. And as you turn them, they change from white and the light level goes across the spectrum. So they go sequentially. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. So as you pull it, it goes and the violet is so the violet comes out, the indigo comes out, the blue comes out, the green comes out, like it clicks down or clicks back up. And it's actually if an action just to turn one. Okay. Well then I just turn one to see if anything happens that that changes our situation. Or like <laughs> What I'm save hoping us. for is that save maybe, us obelisk. <laughs> maybe the there's like a distraction that's going to happen because no nobody knows I'm here yet. So I'm just trying to do something to cause. Yeah, there there's a there's a audible pulse that you feel, but nothing happens around you that beyond the changing it. of the dial. I I yell that ought to do it, and I I run into yeah. the into the room. <laughs> okay uh the the creatures so they are considerably down so having um one of them that was attacked by rudy it flies up all the way um and it flies up so they they, they were 30 feet down so they got to fly all, all the way up and so it comes up and it it sees you rudy the others fly up as well and see you as well um and all of them are gonna fire their lasers at you <laughs> uh so the first one actually gets uh two 24s to hit oh my god oh, no. the second one gets a uh eight and a 13 mm -hmm. and the last one gets an 18 and a 15. three of them hit. three hit okay see this is big money. So Rudy, uh, that's going to be a grand total of counting numbers. 26 points of fire damage. It's manageable. It's manageable. Is it? That's a lot. My eyebrows are singed. Already. How to use fire against us. Rudy, it is your turn. All right, I push through the door. Uh, what's the door made of? Uh, the door is made of this greenish metal. Perfect. Um, I close the door behind us and I cast Arcane Lock on the door. <laughs> uh, I think Arcane, does Arcane Lock one action to cast? One action. Okay, okay. You close the door and Arcane Lock it. Cool. <laughs> the door is now arcane locked. All right. The okay, password Rudy? is uh uh what is one of my children's name? Uh <laughs> <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> you're drawing a blank, but it's because uh, you're kind of on fire. <laughs> dove. The password to get in through that door is dove if you need it, all right? <laughs> she yells out as she slams the door closed. <laughs> you guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> so. My friends, I'm sorry. The Bruce stumbled across something 
down there. They were inspecting or guarding whatever was down that pit. Well, Rath, thanks for finding this room. At least we're safe now. There's uh, another really door. Room. There's another door leading uh, out of the the chamber. And you said these like spectral figures are around. Mm-hmm. Um. I step around them because I'm like, I don't trust testing these things. Um, do they move towards me or? Um, they do not move in place. It, as you look more closely as the as the spectral energy uh, pulses around them, it's almost like they're held in place and sort of shaking where they stand. Um, All right. <laughs> weird. I avoid touching them. I hope this does not happen to us in this room. Uh, I'm gonna go up to this door. Is it o- is it openable? Uh, it it is. I peek up through it. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna see next. <laughs> um, there's no keyholes or anything. It just pushes open. Um, as you as you push open uh, the door, it opens into another similar chamber uh, of of very similar construction to the last one. Although this one is also appointed with several stone blocks, uh, they are of similar angular construction. Many of them are simply cubes of various shapes. And essentially, what you see in the in in the chamber is there is a um, there are about a dozen stone cubes that are arrayed, arranged around a stone platform that is perfectly square, but rectangular and flat. And there is nothing holding up the stone platform, but it rests about three feet above the ground. And there's two of these in this in this room. So you can just imagine a, a there. there's these stone, uh, 10 foot by 10 foot, uh, about six inches thick, granite pieces of stone um, suspended about three feet above the ground with about a dozen granite cubes around each one. Um, while I look at these cubes, I'm just going to rub some ointment on my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Burn, uh, rub off the burns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are we still in initiative order, or are we just Mm-mm. no? Uh, how much does ointment re- replenish? Eighteen. Eighteen. I'm gonna. I I see Rudy, and I'm like, yeah. Now seems like a good. Let's time just for take that. an ointment break. <laughs> uh, I, I'm also going to use ointment. All right. And can we see the room on the map? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I'll rub some ointment too. That's, uh, I'll go into the room. I come up next to Rudy. Quick thinking, Rudy. We'll have to make our way around and find another way. I, mean, I don't know what happened. Back, we have to go back, but I mean. Your, your, your bolts seem to do nothing against that creature. I suspect fire on fire is not going to work. Uh, perhaps if we have any um, water, I don't know, Raph, so, summon water? Uh, <laughs> so those are those are the locations of the two squares that are there, and there's basically the four cubes on each side of the square. Mm. And then there is another set of doors right up over here. And the cubes, do they have any writing on them? Uh, no, but upon closer inspection, it appears that the cubes are also hovering about two inches off the floor. This place just keeps getting stranger and stranger. What did we walk into? Some lighthouse. Not really a lighthouse. Do, I do say so myself. No. There's curious magics going on here. Uh, Raff and have you seen anything like this from the academy or is th- this feels different ancient lighthouses of elves was a uh, optional class that i <laughs> didn't take but i can tell you that this seems to be a lighthouse 
It's just we haven't quite figured out how it operates. There could be some kind it. of secret. Um, I believe we might have met the keepers, but I don't think these fish folk know the true purpose of this place. Or if they do, we should hurry and figure it out. It's better in our hands than theirs, I suppose. The, the machine, the scrying machine that we found did tell us that there was some sort of power source. Um, building feels like a power source, doesn't it? Yeah. Feels like there's energy everywhere here. Um, I'm going to step around the cubes and there's another door on the side. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I, I also kind of sneak a peek in there. Making our way. Alrighty. So, once again, this room has a very similar sort of uh, hemispherical circular shape uh, to it. And in this room um, is a little bit different from the... uh, In in terms of... um, There's actually light in this room. (laughs) that is illuminating the uh the room because all that is in suspended in this room are four spheres one made of magma one made of liquid water one made of clouds and another made of roiling earth and mud and the four spheres uh are each um kind of floating they're they're about maybe 18 inches in in diameter uh floating floating side by side so fire air water and earth along the edge of this room and then there is a circular uh there is a um a sort of uh circular it's going to come out as a square but there it's a circle that is there again it's about 12 feet in diameter six inches in size uh, six inches thick floating uh floating about four feet off the ground this time and there are several um long rods with um that are made of the same metal as the doors and each of the rods ends in a bowl so they're like giant spoons that are about two feet uh two feet long with a spoon head about six inches wide and there's four of them resting on the table there's some sort of futuristic kitchen (laughs) i was gonna say it's mixing something up there the (laughs) Um, the rods the rods are they different from each other as you go, as you come closer to them, the rods uh, are slightly different. They are marked with slightly different designs upon each. That Wilhelm can actually confirm. That can conf- confirm with uh, to Elven runes for each of the four different elements. Uh, the spoons are the elements, and the elements are here. And so, what if one? Hmm. What if we put the appropriate element? Scoop each element with the appropriate scooper? Yes. Now we are looking for the cardinal, so time is of the essence, but also we have just locked ourselves in this chamber and have found mysteries on top of mysteries, and I don't know whether trying to gain control of the elements of this tower might give us an advantage. It's possible. It could be worth trying something. I'm open to it. We got time. <laughs> Everyone grab locked. a spoon. I, I'm i going to grab one of the spoons and see. Which the, spoon are you going to grab? Water. Okay. You grab the water spoon. And I'm going to stick it into the water orb. Okay. And then I pull it out. Does water now stay on the spoon? Yes, a perfect sphere of water gets scooped out of the water. I then place the spoon back where it went. Uh, Placing the spoon on the table, suddenly the water lifts up and hovers in the center of the table. And all of a sudden, 
the entire table illuminates with these glowing uh, elven runes and dials. And looking around, reading them in, in ancient elven, all of the dials correspond to all sorts of different material properties. So one of the, the dials says density, weight, size, shape, adjustment, just everything. And so, and all of them correspond to all the different ways that you could possibly shape or recompose water. So temperature is also one of the things that you can change here, solid, liquid, gas, changing it around in that way. Ooh. Wilhelm, freeze it, freeze it. Uh, I try to find temperature and I'm going to uh, drop it down. It, the, the, it freezes into ice. Uh, Rudy, I think I know how to operate this machine. Uh, Rath, I want you to note that I am skilled with magic. No, you have a giant <laughs> ice machine. Let's be very clear as to what you have discovered. Magic. <laughs> Is there any way we can use this water to douse out those scary flaming skulls? I mean, if we all take a spoon of water and go and hurl it at the skulls, it might work. I... Why did you want me to toss some ice, ice at them? Just figure it's something I can. Can I try to pick up the ice with my hand? Um, as you as you go to reach in towards the ice and pick it up, um, there's kind of this noise and the the whole thing um just illuminates and the and the water unfreezes and splashes down oh, in the middle of, of the, the 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 table um just splashes out and then the water fades and evaporates almost in instantaneously and the whole thing goes dark rudy i was working here i was making a masterpiece and now it just shows everywhere. I can't grab the ice and take it with us. Who's going yeah, to clean this we, up? What a... I pressed the digitator. Uh, thank you. The, the water disappeared on its on its own. Oh. Um, oh. Wilhelm, looking looking around, it it seems like there there was one other button that you know just before Rudy went out to to touch it that that was the Elven word for fabricate. Rudy, grab me another shovel full of element. Uh, this time I grab, is there fire? Fire? Yep. Like I've yep. had some luck with fire today, so I'm just going to try this out. And I put the fire on the thing. All right. Let's see what we can do. Raph, do you want to give me a hand here? Do you want to, I, I, I read all of the buttons to Raph so that we can work our minds hmm. together to try to come up with a cool thing to do. The fire one brings in far less uh when, when you bring it in like you can change the heat of the of, of the fire but it uh, um but it seems like the the where the temperature gauge was when you brought it in um more elements sort of light up and as it floats in the middle it almost appears like a little star floating in the center will you hit the button I'm going to I'm going to mess with some of the dials just a little bit to try to get it a nice decent temperature. Perfect. And then like yeah. Uh that looks good. That looks like good um good I want to try one more fire. thing. One more thing. Yes, Rudy. What? While what? the fire's in there, can I, I want to grab the earth and put the earth in. Mix it. Okay. When the earth is put in, the earth lights up with all sorts of different metals and the material composition of the earth itself and the two elements together start to react and almost as if it's like lava or liquid metal or almost as if the things that you could build with fire and earth are now all possible um i start add, add water no yeah. 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 Can yeah. I like can I finagle it into the shape of like I don't know, can I make can I like form it into the shape of a weapon? Is that something that I could Yeah, you, you, as, as you start to realize this, you absolutely could. It 
would actually require you to work for several hours mm. to make any complex object in sort of a backwards sort of way of building an object you you can see that this this now kind of looking at it this is a forge of sorts um it would allow you if you knew all the properties and understood all the tools and like you learned how it worked you probably could um it would be a different method of building things that is not the same as how things are built beyond, but it functions in that way. Does it necessarily build things faster than you could otherwise? Perhaps if you were a master of using it, yes. Hmm. Uh, with this discovery, I turn to the other two and I'm like, we need to gain control of this tower for if this was in the Academy's hands, uh, manufacturing weaponry might be far easier and being able to to produce things that could aid us in our journeys might might be extremely beneficial. Um, but it it's it's beyond my my current knowledge base. I would need time to figure this out. I'm no I'm no smith. Um, as I'm playing with the dials, though, since that's way too complicated, can I just make it into like, can I like compress it all into like a little coin or something and then hit fabricate and see if it works? Yeah. And as you compress it into a coin, into like a simple metal shape, there's kind of this pounding and all, and quite suddenly the, the center of the table rotates, opens up and an array of delicate clockwork arms come out with spindly hands and begin shaping and building the thing that you designed well um, as, as they finish I'm going to pluck it out and hold it up and just be like or it's, do they finish? It, 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 they haven't finished yet ah. it's yeah <laughs> As it's working, do I notice if the elements that we took from is is it depleted in any way? Make a investigation check. Oh, four. Um. Yeah, you can't really tell. Okay. Well, we came all this way, and I made a coin. Cool. I mean, we have a way to make unlimited coins. That would be fantastic. Is there like uh, a just a, a machine you can make that presses the fabricate button over and over and <laughs> over? <laughs> hmm. Is it, how long does it take them to finish the coin? Like, are we gonna standing? wait? Are we gonna wait for it? Um, effectively, what you can surmise now is that this, uh, this, this. Forge effectively supplies the materials and then casts the fabricate spell. Mm. So it has the same parameters as casting fabricate, uh, the spell itself, but the elemental pools provide raw materials. And because the el because everything is made of, composed of the four elements, simply providing the right amounts of raw fire, earth, water, and air allows you to build. Um, almost anything but rudy is right these elemental pools might not have inexhaustible reserves of raw material hmm. oh but yes after 10 minutes you have a new lucky coin aha <laughs> wilhelm's lucky coin i slide it in my pocket well job well done yeah the spindly arms rest back down uh and and c close up in the table, and then it sets back down again. Well, friends, I have good well, news and bad news. The good news is we found a magical forge. The bad news is there's no else. There's nowhere else for us to go except back to the skulls. Maybe they've calmed down. One can hope. All right, uh, start to make my way. Can I pick up some? Okay, so there's a couple things I want to test. Um, can you sure. pick up a element 
with the opposite or a different spoon? Can I pick no. up water no, with the, their spoon? The, the spoons must be picked up using their correct spoon. If I pick up water spoon, can I go back into the other room? Uh, yeah, you can take the spoon away. I'm just going to like hop across the, the threshold, hop back. Yeah. See. If, okay. Okay. I haven't blown um, up. Learning, learning so much. I was just thinking we could fling water at them as some kind of. <laughs> Rath, get a spoonful of water and let's douse You can't our make friends. water with your, your magic? Stop, doubt, stop <laughs> pointing out my flaws, okay? <laughs> okay, Rudy, I just can't make water. Sometimes you just have to carry it. <laughs> all right, all right. What if I throw it? If I throw the water out the wall, does it disappear as soon as it leaves the spoon? Um, the best way to think about it is that the the elemental pools are almost in a in a state that is not qua- fully real yet. So they have to get processed through this forge in order to become real. I place the spoon back down. This was pointless. What about these cubes in here? And I I go up to them and I say, before we go, we should probably, for intel purposes, be able to tell, you know, your sister what, what's going on here. And I, I start to circle this cube. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And Walking between the... So there's... It's the... Basically the square... Yeah. It is floating, and then the rectangles. Oh, sorry, the not the rectangles. The uh, cubes around it. Can I pick the cubes up off the ground? Um, when you pick the cube up off, off the ground, they slide very gently because they're two inches off the ground itself. So they slide. They're quite heavy to pick up above that, but they move around along the floor really easily they must like it's solid granite Mm -hmm. but as you go to pick it up you you realize that the like there's air resistance on the top of the cube in some way like there's there's like as you put your hand on the top of the cube you're you're you have to like it's as if you're forcing the air down and so you can't quite get your hand to place on the top of the cube it's it's actually it's firm but soft i i'm gonna take my coin and place it on top of the cube does it just hover there yeah Hmm. i jump on the cube (laughs) ah yes you are standing on the cube, but you're like four inches above, and it's it's a little uneven as you stand there. It like it like f- almost feels like you're standing on a chair. All right, Rudy. Now try to control it with your mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly push the 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 stone that Rudy's on, and can I easily push it even with her on it? Wait, don't, yeah, don't yeah. push me into the square. Yeah, yeah, you can push her with her with with, with her on it. And she kind of spins around. And does it move in every direction? Is it following a track? It it moves in every every direction. It it's just a cube. It 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 feels like it's on wheels that would go in any direction, but it doesn't. So maybe they can go might, fit somewhere. These might be a clue to activating this tower, but they might also be seating. I. <laughs> be both. Like if you if you sit down on the cube, it's it's a comfy. Like the air is comfy. Like you're sitting on air, and as you lean back, the the air holds your arm and back up as you lean back into it. Guys want to have a race. <laughs> No, there's no time for that. We need to find the cardinal. I'm getting sidetracked. We have to find the cardinal. Find the cardinal. All right, we'll the come back to these incredible. fancy squares and cubes in a moment. Uh, come back into this room. And uh, does anybody have a stick that you can poke these? Uh... Of course I do. And I pull out my uh, my rapier. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going Uh-oh. to... Just like throw it at it. Don't hold the end just in case there's like, you know, like currents that come from it. Well, in that case, when I put my rapier away and I pull out my coin again, and I'm just going to flip <laughs> my go. coin into one of the luminous beings. So okay. 
your coin flips into the luminous being and it collides into the luminous being with a crash and there is a shock of electric energy and ozone shudders through the the in, entire uh, uh, through the air as as this being just shakes and shudders um, and all of a sudden the the lights flash and flicker and then all, all, all of a sudden um, there's the uh, the lights go out for a moment and then your dark vision takes over and you see that there are now six charred corpses on the ground scattered in this room did, did i just kill them <laughs> they were already dead will maybe the they? coin kills people you just forged it um a deadly coin and do they have anything on them as I inspect them from afar while covering my nose? <laughs> if they did, <laughs> whatever Wilhelm did soundly destroyed it. Um, Man. what if we turn the light back on? I wanna, I wanna cast light on my my quarter staff i think i have a quarter staff okay and see if i can light the room up again okay you you cast light on your quarter staff and the loom the room is is illuminated which over overpower like the the pulsing light kind of returns to the chamber but it's much fainter than it was before are the corpses still on the ground yep oh yeah oh yeah well um we'll call them <laughs> enemies and we'll say that i have triumphed against them is uh that makes me feel I guess better. one last thing I want to check is um can I tell what race they are Examining the bodies these were definitely elves Oh mm. Oh dear <laughs> Well they they've probably been here for quite a while uh, uh Well um I think it's safe to say that you didn't <laughs> You didn't kill them. You just took them out of the state that they were in. Agreed. That there, there's something that trapped them here. You know, thank, thank you, thank you too. It's uh, it's reassuring. And hopefully, uh, it doesn't trap us here too. Maybe those flaming skulls were just elves as well, and can be reasoned with. Uh, I doubt that. My uh, <laughs> yeah, I doubt that too. I'm just eyebrows. I'm just fishing for hopeful I'm gonna stay concepts. off to the side well, well how can we check we could so, maybe see if they're in there yeah with arcane lock uh y me and the creatures i designate can open the door normally so mm -hmm. so here's the question team we have a staircase that goes back up where a couple of very large fish are wrangling a wyvern we also have a pit filled with flaming death of mm -hmm. sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, which way would you like to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the creatures may not know that we are here. The skulls do. My vote is for those other creatures. So it's also we have not found um, the cardinal. The cardinal might be down further rather than backtracking. You think that the Cardinal would be further away? Or I believe the Cardinal might be where those fish folk came from. Those monstrous creatures. Yes. But let me let me paint a word picture for you, Wrath. What I love if it. what if the way down that we saw upstairs links to the down that is also here so if we go down we can go back around now we might have to fight the flame skulls but the fact is going back up that very 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 long staircase back up to those fish folk wrangling a wyvern is just us wasting time going back the way we came and getting into a fight potentially or we face the foes before us. Bravery is key here. We need to run forward with with courage in our hearts, 
fight the flame skulls and carry on deeper into the depths of this place. What say you? Lead the way. Oh, well, <laughs> Rudy. I'm all for it. I just had an idea. If we ever need to come back here to get away from folks, at least we have a locked space where we can rest. This is now a safe place for us to uh, recuperate. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we have that. This is now our base <laughs> of operations. Let's push further. All right. Okay. Be very careful. I, I slightly open the door to... Actually, you know what? I opened the door and I sent Houdini out. <laughs> uh, the creatures that were here before are not here anymore. Uh, there are scorch marks on the other side of the door. Um, but um, it, uh, it looks like the lights now have gone back down. Um, the, what you can see looking back around, the, the scorch marks on the door are very precise as if the creatures were not trying to open this door indiscriminately but in such a manner as to not do any damage um and look like they were fired from a very short range like the sh the, the the shots the the shots that were made were done with a level of precision um and it looking looking back at the the obelisk that is that is here Perhaps those shots were, were clearly fired with someone who is not trying to damage delicate instruments. Hmm. Now, potentially, they might be guardians of something here. Who knows? They might just be trying to protect this place could, from intruders. We could take another look at the obelisk and see if there's any anything now that the attention seems to be away from us we could try a few more of these obelisk buttons here and switches I just peek over the edge and just like oh they're definitely down there mm. uh, Wilhelm has yes. the dials moved back from their original position that you moved it from I, I go back up to the um, the uh, stone slab and is the dial that i turned is it still turned no mm. it's turned back the way you found it rudy wrath perhaps be ready with an action to take if things go awry um i'm going to i'm going to try turning the dial again Cool. There's 12 of these dials. There are you how many of them do you want to turn or, or do you can just say like number X, like number 6, number 7, number 8. I turn They're in a circle, right? No, the the best way to think of it is imagine the face of a domino that is showing sixes on both sections. Mhm. Mm Okay, so there are dots, and then you turn the dots. So there's 12 dots along, along the front. And so each dot can be set from red to white, but it has to go in a sequential. It, they're all sequentially ordered. So they go from red, like, so you can't, like, when you click it back, it's showing red, orange, yellow. Um, but... You, so you couldn't, sh like, if you clicked it to blue, you have to show all the colors before blue. You can't not have just blue showing. And do the names on the dials correspond with the colors that they're showing? The Yes, they just say the color that they're, they're currently showing. Okay. And with the white actually saying not white, but full. I'm going to turn... How many colors are there? Twelve. But, or no, 12 dials. There's 12 dials, each going for uh, doing your Roy, Roy G. Biv, right? So there's seven, there's seven, but it's eight because the eighth one clicks it to full white. I'm going and, to yeah. turn the first eight dials, one to each color. Okay. Does anything happen? 
you hear a thrum throughout the complex, but nothing beyond that. Try them all full. I. They're, that's how they're. That's their default oh. state. I turn the final ones to various colors as well, so that none of them are full. Okay. Same thing. Yep. Turn well, them all red. It's my favorite. Red. Color. Uh. All right. I turn pretty red. Each you one can all. Red. Uh, sorry, I, I should specify when you turn each one to red, you realize that you can also turn them to nothing. So, click. First, I try them all at red. Does anything new happen? No. I turn them all to nothing. Okay. They are turned all to nothing. Well, that's about it for me, friends. We've exhausted <laughs> that. That happened. <laughs> and the, I, I peek back over the skulls. Have they noticed anything? Roll a d6. All of you. Four. Five. Five. Doesn't seem like they have. Um, this machine must have some other sort of on point. There, there must be a purpose that we're not comprehending at this moment. I say we leave it for now. We at least have our safe haven here. Uh, if we find further clues in the dungeon, we can come back and, and assess the purpose. There, there has to be a purpose to these dials and, mm -hmm. and what they, they do. I'm just not sure what it is. Is there anything on the other side of the obelisk? Uh, the obelisk opens up to the seven pillared gallery here that lead, that is a 60 foot drop st straight down to the floor. But there's like I mean, nothing on the other side of it, right? It's just a flat. No, the, 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 um, on or, the opposite side of the wall, it has the celestial designs that are common for the, for, for the rest of this area, but that's it. Okay. I'm going to start tying a rope around myself and I'm like, all right, guys. I think, uh, is there a way to descend sneakily on a rope? I don't, I don't know. Um, or am I just going to be hanging? Lunch? You you can, uh, so you can be quiet, but you can't be hidden. Like like so, you can still be quiet, so you're not heard, but your ability to be unseen is basically nil. Rudy, I want you to hold the other end of this rope, and I'm going to descend. Hold the rope. Um, I'm I'm going to kind of like lean back and like hang over the edge. Okay. And then hop. Okay, you climb down, um, and descend down to the bottom. Um, from where you are, you can kind of slide down the pillars here as well. That's kind of my um, plan. And so by the time you get to the ground, if you're quick enough, you might be able to use the pillar to keep slightly out of sight by moving quickly as you do so. So give me a stealth check with disadvantage. All right. I got a 14. Okay. Not as good as my 27, but I'll take it. You take what you get. Okay. So, Wilhelm, um, what I will do here is you have made it down to the bottom um, on the ground level. We'll switch it over here. Uh, and so you make it down. You're now on the ground level. I'm going to put you behind this the, this pillar here because that's kind of where you came down. Yeah. And Bruce is not alive. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Um, this guy, uh, right now, the only one that you can see is this one here, which is kind of fluttering around and it's look, it's the, the back of the skull is facing away from you, looking at the mural in front of it. Can I bonus action hide behind this pillar or what's yes. my, like with yep. a full stealth check? Yeah. Now, yeah. Now that you're down all the way, you, you, you can for sure. Uh, that's going to be 21. Okay. Rudy, Wrath, what are the two of you going to do? Wrath, you want me to lower you down? <laughs> oh, God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I do the... How, how big are the pillars? How, like, uh, the, are the, the pillars are approximately two feet in circumference, in, in diameter, sorry. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, Wrath, I... 
lower you down. Thank okay. You. All right, you lower Wrath down. Wrath, you can give me a stealth check. Uh, 16. Okay. And Rudy, are you going to try making it your way down here? I am. <laughs> um... Because there's no one to hold this rope now, so you're going to need to climb on your own. Oh, I know. That's why I was thinking, um... Tie it to the obelisk. <laughs> if I... <laughs> I say in your brain. <laughs> if I jump and hold the pillar and slide down the pillar... How, <laughs> how loud is that? Uh, that will not be stealthy at all, but you could definitely do that to get down. Um, You know what? No, I'll, I'll tie the rope That's to the obelisk. What you want... If you want to try to shimmy down yeah, while like, remaining hidden, I will allow you... So, you're going to have to make an athletics check to do this without falling. It's all right. If you want to... If you would like to use stealth, I will allow you to do so with disadvantage. And you can make a stealth check, and you can make your athletics check with disadvantage as well. So, you can take athletics straight or athletics and stealth both with disadvantage. Um, and if I choose, I, if I choose to do the rope on the obelisk, am I covered by a pillar if I do that? Um, yes, you can get. Remember, the pillar just gives you the ability to even try using stealth. Without yeah. it, there's no chance. So the pillar, the existence of the pillar, is what is allowing you to use stealth. It's not actually giving you any benefit. Because if it wasn't there, you yeah. wouldn't be able to use stealth at all. You know what? I'm going to try to disadvantage <laughs> stealth and climb down the thing. Why Alrighty. not? Okay, let's get the... Wow. Which one do you want to roll first? Wow. Athletics. We have to catch. We have to okay. catch, Rudy. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, so I got a 15 with disadvantage. Fif with athletics? With athletics. Okay, yeah. that is sufficient to slide down. Let's see how stealthy this whole affair was. Mm. Oh, natural one. Nope, six. I rolled a six. <laughs> okay, so you totally gracefully, like, pro-firefighter style, slide down this pillar and land with a loud thud, and the, f the this burning skull turns around and shrieks at you, and that's where we're going to take our break. Uh... <laughs> good, good. Perfect. <laughs> Alrighty, so with that, uh, we shall wrap up uh, and be back in 20 minutes, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, see you all in a bit. And we are back from our short rest. We have all uh, feasted on our various uh, various dinners. Would you guys have anything to eat? Grab a I bite? A, I had a granola bar. Does that count Coffee as a dinner? Jones. No, 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 it doesn't. I had stir fried chicken. It was great. I had an uh, apple and two pickles. Guys, well, I'm home alone right now. I can't <laughs> make myself food that quick. Can't make food here. And after, after. Yeah. My husband brought me sloppy joes, so it's nice. Oh. Nice, nice. Okay, so um, bringing us right back on, uh, jump, hopping right back to it, we ended with Rudy sliding down the pillar. Roll for initiative. <laughs> I'm not gonna roll the blue one. The blue one's been bad tonight. Oh, see? Uh, 18. Okay. Uh, 21. Wrath? 17. Okay, so it's gonna go Wilhelm, Rudy, Wrath, and then, uh, the Scully Boys. Okay, so Wilhelm, uh, despite the fact that Rudy landed with it, with it, you see her coming down, and you're like, "Oh no, I gotta be ready for this one." <laughs> yeah, I'm half-heartedly <laughs> trying to catch her. Right. So uh, it's at this point you can see that there is the first one that is just about to whip around, uh, and this one that's just coming around the corner as well. So I'm gonna say that you are hidden still uh, from from them. They're not. Um, because Rudy comes down with a crash, they're not going to be surprised, but you are hidden and have advantage on your first attack. All right. Uh, as soon as Rudy crashes into the ground and I see the flame skull whip its head towards her and screech, I pop out from behind the pillar with my crossbow, line it up, and I'm going to fire a shot at it. All right. Go for it. 
Uh, I crit. Wow! Uh, that is a, is that your, the first time you crit with a sneak attack? Yes, it is. <laughs> I believe a uh, crossbow with sneak attack is 30 uh, plus an additional 5d6. Because, uh, yeah, you're rolling 46 for sneak attack, so, so yeah, so 30 plus dice. So proud of you. Uh, 46 damage. Um, the bolt catches it in the lower part of the jaw and sends the teeth and skull bits flying everywhere and the light just winks out. <laughs> um, I am then going to move right up against the pillar on the opposite side that Rudy is on and take a shot at this other, um, this other flame skull. Okay, go for it. Do I get advantage on both shots? Just um, just the first one, because now you, now you've exposed your position. All right. Uh, in that case, that is going to be twenty three to hit. It is a hit. Woo. For ten damage. Okay, not quite as impressive as the previous. Hit. <laughs> well, you can only crit so many times, you know. I'm is impressed. a limit. Is a limit on your d twenty. The limit does not exist. And you are using your magic crossbow, yeah? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, perfect. Okay. So, uh, with that, we go to Rudy. All right. Um, I can't get over to it, but I can... Uh... get over to it um i'm going to misty step <laughs> oh nice. new feet Woo! new feet uh gets me quick feet me yep. there um so that is my bonus action correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. yeah okay and then i'm gonna nice. use some more movement and i'm going to smash its face in oh and nice. houdini needs to Houdini flies 60, I think. Yeah, 60 feet. So it comes along here and Kay. smash it twice. Nice. Uh, 18 to hit. Uh, that, uh, as as your axe blow comes down, uh, oh, no, it's not going to be enough. Ah, I can't shield that one. Okay. Nope. Okay. Not going to help. Mm. Not going to help. Not uh -huh. going to save the me. Dance. The little <laughs> dance there. <laughs> Um, 10 damage. Okay. And you are attacking with your magical axe, correct? Yes. Bellicose, my one, I've named them. Bellicose comes down, smashes the skull in the skull. Nice. And then, <laughs> uh, Bullshi is the other one, comes in for 16. A hit, uh, right. but I can block that one with ah, shield. All right. Uh, comes down, uh, and I'm at the ready, ready to go for some more hits. Once it's ready. Great. Wrath, it's your turn. Um, I'm just going to line up uh, a shot at this flaming skull um, from downtown, uh, and I get a 17. With its shimmering shield of force in place, that is a miss. Uh, my second shot trying to break through, and it's not enough. I, I, I It goes just wide. And I, I'm just going to start to slowly work my way towards it, sort of just walking um, um, up towards uh, where Wilhelm is. And, and I, I take those two shots. Uh, these blasts that one just doesn't quite make it through and the other one just totally misses. Alrighty. Um, all right. So the, um, the other door slides open. Mm. And another, and the third one of these slides through, screams at you, and drops a fireball on Wilhelm and Wrath. They can open ah! doors. <laughs> they can fireball. <laughs> uh, you two can both make dexterity saving throws. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Oh. Fire. Well, hot dice tonight for me. 
Uh, I rolled a 28 on my dexterity saving throw. Well, look at you, you fancy pants. Well, I got an 8. So that's a clean, <laughs> a clean 20 away from you. And that's a clean 28 points of fire damage oh! from that fireball. None for me. Thank you, Evasion. I see it um, come through the door, and I'm just like, it could go through doors, and then it's Wrath is saying, it can cast fire. I, like, run and dive out of the way, and the ball just goes off on the map. Yeah. Um, now, this one is right up against you, Rudy. So what it's actually going to uh, do is point blank fireball you. I don't think I can get... I don't think I can carpet bomb you all with this. Uh, uh, you guys were lucky that you guys were upstairs when when I had all three of them because they don't. <laughs> I'm really happy. Yeah, I. I, I mm, that could have been really bad. Mm, mm, no, it may. Mm, mm, I get. I guess technically, if I'm. I guess technically. I guess technically. I'm not restricted to my five foot grid and I could do that and catch all of you. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and give you all advantage on your saving throws. I'm going to remember that with, uh, <laughs> with my area of effect. Attack. Yeah, I'm going to remember that. Houdini thing. survives. <laughs> uh, what is it? A dex? It's a, it's a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. I only got 24 this time. 15. Tw- uh, f- w- uh, sorry, I, I missed everyone's answers 20. to their... 20? Mm-hmm. 24. Uh, you all succeed. Oh, thank God. But I still get to roll a bunch of fireball damage. I take none. I dive I dive into the other fireball and dive out of that. Oh, that's a lot of sixes. <laughs> uh, so that one's going to be 35 points of fire damage. Woo! What's that? Huh? 30... Uh, 17? Wh- wh- yeah, which is half to 17. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ow. <laughs> just just I dove smoking. out of the other fireball, like, half-heartedly into another fireball. I, I, I finish my, like, super awesome rolls around the room, and I look up, and Wrath <laughs> and Rudy just... Wrath especially. Wrath is just smoked. <laughs> I'm so burned. <laughs> Bruce, help, Bruce! The skulls—they take everything. Alrighty. With that, Wilhelm, it is your turn. Uh, Wilhelm, <laughs> as the flames lick down through the rest of the room. Room. Uh, Wilhelm, what? Oh, uh, I hold on. Did uh, you close the window by mistake? Apparently, by accident. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. We're back. Okay. Uh, Wilhelm, running from pillar to pillar, uh, moves up towards the flame skull. So he like, boom, he like jumps over here, then he jumps over here, and then he pops out and attempts to stab the creature with his moon-touched rapier. He draws out his blade and jumps from behind the pillar to attack it. I don't know why I'm rolling two dice. I only get one. Um, uh, 17? Shield! Uh, It blocks it! It bounces. I try to parry around and fire my crossbow at it around its shield. I attempt to. Yeah. Doing worse. So... uh, no. Nope. Yep, the shivering shield protects it from your blows. And then how far did I move? Okay, I'm gonna move back. I I I move I like cartwheel backwards and hold my rapier out at the ready. Alright, Rudy, it's your turn. Alright, I'm just gonna take a bunch of swipes at it. <gasps> Alright. Uh twenty three to hit. Uh, that is a hit, and far beyond my capability to shield. Seven damage. Okay. Right. Uh, second shot. Oh, uh, that's a fifteen. Um, I will block it with shield. Okay. 
Third shot. Da, da, da. 21 to hit. That is a hit. Well, uh, nine damage. And <sighs> he's still kicking. You know what? I'm <laughs> going to action surge and I'm going <laughs> to hit Kay. it two more times. Uh, oh, oh, damn. Oh, darn. Uh, what is it? 27 <laughs> okay is. i think you got it this time ah, yeah uh uh 13 no no 12 battering it around <laughs> in the end you finally smash it over the crown of the skull and it just goes straight down and crashes into the uh, on onto the floor and i move over to this guy and i get him one last shot cool bam uh 17, no, 8, 19, I can't do math, sorry, 19. Okay, that, that is a hit. It had previously cast shield already against Wilhelm, but that it's increased AC is fine. That's that is still a hit. Plus eight. <laughs> um, 11 damage. Okay, it's still ticking. Wrath, we're over to you, buddy. How's it, how's, uh, how's the, how's the third degree burns treating you? I... I am nothing. I'm I'm checking to make sure all my stuff is in order. <laughs> Just quickly, to, it, I, it's a lot of fire. It's a lot of fire. Thanks for asking. Mm. Um, I'm gonna shoot back. I'm gonna take my vengeance out on this creature. Sixteen. Uh, with its shield still in place, that is a miss. Wrath, buddy. And then I run away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Knowing the full capabilities of uh, of a good uh, fireball. Fireball. Fortunately, these things can only cast fireball once. Oh, good. Uh, but uh, I'm still going to cast magic missile using a second level spell slot against Rudy. So enjoy getting magic missile, Rudy. Uh, can I shield that? I can shield that, right? Oh, yeah, you can shield magic missile. Shield. What? <laughs> Shut down. Shields up. Uh, yeah, you just saved yourself taking 15 points of damage. Oh man, there's a lot of shields going on here. Yeah, just <laughs> pew 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 pew. Yeah. Everybody has shields a up. shield except me. Yeah. I'm just covered what in a, shields and lasers and explosions. We sci-fi in here. <laughs> I was not prepared. Alrighty, with that, uh, Wilhelm, we are over to you, buddy. Charging back into the fray, Wilhelm attempts to stab the creature. Uh, that's going to be 21 to hit. It is going through. And that is also going to be sneak attacked. Twenty-five damage. Nice. And with that, you batter it against the wall, and it collapses, destroyed. And I, f with a flick of my rapier, I sheath it and turn to the two of you. Wrath, uh, still putting out fires, and Rudy looking a little beaten up. And I brush off my shoulder and say, "Well, that was berries, wasn't it?" The the door that it came through is a sliding door, and it the door is kind of getting confused by by people standing in front of it, and it's going. <laughs> What do I see beyond it? <laughs> I'm just like, peek through. This magic door, it's curious. As I'm rubbing more lotion <laughs> on my face. Okay. Yes. Through this lotion door. Time. So the first thing that you see through this door is a rectangle with several cubes by it, just as you saw upstairs. But in, and that's in the, the, the middle of the room. My, Monty was lazy and I forgot to add the art for the <laughs> for those rooms up there before. Um, but then in this room are several curious um, se several more curious rectangles. Okay? The rectangles are each floating in the air uh, and this chamber itself is 60 feet high just as the previous room is. So it stretches up 60 feet the doors open up and there are just rectangles floating above each other and the stone rectangles then all have what at first glance appear to be books 
the material of the cover is glossy and these books have a quality to them that you've not seen before but they're very clearly books with gleaming gilded edges on them there is no label on any of the spines of the book I'm smearing ointment on my face and my burns, mostly my burns. There must be hundreds of books here. Um, um, go ahead. No, you go. Uh, I walk up. So like, are they, they're actual books. Like they're tangible. Yeah. Books. yeah. I'm going to pull one off and open it and just see what's, what sort of things are. Inside. I'm reading over your shoulder. Hmm. The pages are com- the the pages are completely blank. Uh, Do all these books look the same? No, they are all of slightly different size and shape. Most of them are quite thick, but uh, they have gilded edges. Some of them are slightly different colors, um, but they're not like normally you'd expect a book to be made out of leather and paper, but whatever these books are made of is not leather and not paper but both behave like such the material that the the pages are almost smooth to the touch and have this slightly glossy sheen to them and the covers feel like well, they, they feel like a material that you've never held before. Like, it's actually, like, what is this material? I, um, I'm actually going to take this book and I walk over to the uh, stone, the, the slab in the middle, and I'm going to, going to kind of toss the book onto the slab and see if anything happens. Um, the book lands on the slab with a thud. I was hoping that it would explode into a projection of, uh, I don't know, we've seen such crazy things in here. I, I mean, the book is shot. still closed, so... I open the book. Opening the book, the, um, the, the book opens, and there's a shimmer above the table as several um, lines begin appearing. Um, and... All of the lines repeat the same word over and over and over again. Gone. In Elvin. Well, I... And and in particular, it is a very specific Elvin word that translates best as gone. But it is an Elvin word that means not being able to remember the face of a dead parent. Mm. So in Elvin, it carries that connotation of like when you can't remember what some a, a, a deceased loved one's face looks like. Mm. So it, it is a word loaded with melancholy and and, and pain. Mm. This if book's I quite sad. Another one of the books. Picking books, books at random. Pain. I put it down and I look at Wilhelm and I say, does it say the same thing? Let's find out. I, I open the book that Rudy picked. Um, placing the other book down, it says empty. And again, it is that feeling of um, em- it is the elven word that carries the connotation of the feeling of emptiness that one has when one has watched all of one's loved ones pass away. Hmm. This is a very sad library, but um, on the plus side, I think I'm getting the hang of this uh, technology that the elves have. It's starting to make sense. What if you flip through a few pages? Uh, I start flipping through the pages of the book. Um, Flipping through the page, the glimmering runes do a similar thing. And, And the... The words each time are something like gone, nothingness, regret, erased, forgotten. 
Um, and again, each time the word carrying this connotation of a deep sense of loss. Uh, these books are sad and don't have a good <laughs> plot line. I, I don't know if there's much else to discover here, but it sounds like this is a library of lost and forgotten things to the elves. And I don't know if it... Uh, okay, can I... Trying to think a little critically here. I'm going to speak out loud and kind of try to piece this together. And if there's any anything that can help me piece this together, that would be great. But is the book about things that are lost? Or is the book indicating that it has lost its original message? And like that, that the that the lore that was once stored here is separated somehow from these books. Maybe it's a, a sort of a, uh, a, a, a intertwined meaning. Like it, both the information is lost, but the information was like really important to whoever was holding it. Like it was a sense of maybe it was like an ancestry, or maybe uh, it is some sort of text about their. Uh, whoever the bookkeeper was or the librarian was their their place in time and history um yes i i feel like they they wouldn't fill a bookshelf with books that just repeat the same words over and over again that seems uh, nonsensical but it's imagine- interesting though that it changes words like is there that many words in elven from what you know about elven is it that they could use a bunch of words to describe it, or is it purposefully oh, oh, changing? Elvin the word? definitely works that way. Like, Elvin has a word for the feeling after you drink a cup of coffee on a Tuesday. So, <laughs> the, so the like, machine. Elvin, Elvin has words for everything, and every Elvin word. And no one elven word means any one thing, and every single word in elven is referential to something else. So it is it is a multi-layered and very complex language that doesn't re- like that even when you understand like no, oh, that is what that sigil means. That is what it means. There is it is making so much mean like there's so much referentialness carried to every word in elven. So can I surmise, like, is this book trying to deliver a message, or does it feel more like it's telling me that that it's it like the message is lost along with the memories? The pages are blank. What if we put one of our books on it? I pull out my book of rules and place it on the table and flip it open. You place the book of rules on the table and an image of your father telling you the rules that are on that page appears. It's the it, 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 whatever was happening, like the context around whatever that word was that moment when that sentence was inscribed whatever memory you asso- would most strongly associate with that it appears what is it so i'm inside a building and there's a crash and there's a, there's a man standing before me and he turns quickly to, as he hears the crash and he leans down and he hands me a book And he says, it's the best I can do for you right now. Take care of yourself, Wilhelm. And then there's more noise coming towards us. Hmm. And that's, that's it. And Wilhelm is standing there looking shocked and a little... It's it's, Hmm. it's a lot. I come up and I put my hand on your shoulder and I say, "Who was that? What, what does that mean? It, you made me to do something different. That was that was my father giving me this book. It was um, not not long 
uh, before um, before he yeah um, it was the last time I saw him was it inside or outside it was inside um, just to perhaps provide a little bit more um, so Rudy and Wrath the man that you saw uh, was wearing some form of he had he had very clear heraldry a cloak and a breastplate in scru- that that he that he was wearing and the man looked very similar to Wil- Wilhelm and that he had like this long blonde hair and a th- and a blonde beard perhaps he was in his 40s maybe um when this like there was an image sort of a, of Wilhelm being being passed down to it but the um and what what was the rule that was on the page Wilhelm um hold on I actually I know which one I want this to be um I'm gonna fi- oh there it is uh the rule on the page it flipped open to the 82nd rule which is be a man your father would be proud of mm um and the image that you see after this first scene plays of like the words be in man your father would be proud of um there's the hallway there's the it's this grand really opulent hallway that Wilhelm's father is is in and the scene shifts with the same hallway but another man who is graying telling a younger version of Wilhelm's father this, like a similar uh, like a not dissimilar anecdote right so again what was the phrase Wilhelm uh, be a man your father would be proud of um it, it's the scene that actually plays out is a bit of an altercation between the two men um that ends with the elder saying um I'm still proud of you though and that's where the the sentiment of this rule comes from. So not o- not only is the book showing you like there's it's almost as if it's showing the history embedded in the writing itself. That was that was my grandfather who my grandfather taught my father many values to to live by and in the days leading up to my separation from my family he wrote down as many of those values as he could think of 100 of them and he gave them to me the last day that i saw him i didn't think when i put this book on here that i would be reliving those memories but that's why this book is so important to me it's um it's, it's the only thing i have Oh, I mean, from the looks of him, seemed well off for his time, but seems like you've lost a lot since then. I lost everything. We don't have to relive any of these more moments, and I'm going to pick up the book and and, and hand it back to you. I put it back in my coat. I, um, I think I've had enough of this room for today. Before we go, I got one more thing. uh, um, Yeah, what's up, Rudy? Wrath, bring your bag of holding. We're taking these books with us. (laughs) And I, like, scooch the the shelves off. (laughs) I just put them all into the bag of holding. Okay, you could... Just trying to get one of these shelves would more than fill the bag of holding. So, yeah. So Yeah. We'll take... At least three. Okay. Three the books. biggest, the shiniest, and the smallest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. You you take them with you. Yep. I'm in. All right. Maybe River can make some sense about what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I follow Wilhelm out. Alrighty. Where are you gonna go next? Hmm. Want wander through. 
Um, Let's take a look around this corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this room has comes around the corner to a wide hallway. Um, and there is another doorway similar to the one before, but this hallway ends and there is a curious set of pillars bordering the end of the hall here um, that are glass tubes that go up the height of this hall, which the, the, the this hall itself is 20 feet in height. The glass tubes are colored red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet stacked down from the top and you can see the color in the glass but they're not illuminated and so there is the they're they're dull not not illuminated but there is this kind of tangible reflection of energy between the two of them uh between the the two glass pillars that are lining this hallway is it possible that the buttons we turn them all to to nothing. Maybe that's why you said that the energy looks like l- low, right? Mm-hmm. Could it be because we turned all the dials to nothing that it's it's low energy? Perhaps. We'd have to test out and see. Well, I'm not about to climb back up there. So <laughs> if somebody wants to send, uh, where's where's Bruce? Oh. Um, <laughs> oh. I'm. Raph, I'm not sorry because you can bring him back in like 10 minutes, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. So, I mean... It takes an hour, and I am I have to use treats. Treats that are very valuable. You know how hard it is to feed uh, monsters from another world? No. I don't. So I have this leg of a fish person. It's just in case. If I'm not going to feed it to the river, and I'm going to feed it to Bruce. Anyways, I don't want to think about it. Bruce can't operate machinery anyways. It's um, fine. I mean, I could climb back up, but I don't know if we'd be able to talk to one another. I can we, yell. Opposite. We do not know the, the origin, although I am... With my years of magic study, I can confidently say that as someone who uses magic devices, it seems pretty weird that they would put the control panel way up there for the thing that's way down here. Well, that that thing up there did something. It made a thrumming energy. Look, sound. I'm the magician here. I know all the magic stuff. I just use the regular door. Wrath, I oh, trust you. Okay. <laughs> and I go up and I. Is it one of those sliding doors again, or is it? Yep. A, yeah. Yep. Uh, and in in here is another similar room to the the previous one that you saw, with more of these bookshelves. These bookshelves, uh, and there's a final chamber through the other set of doors, which it also has several more bookshelves as well within it. Um, but uh, again, all of them are empty. The table does the same thing though when you put the books on it. Well, Wrath, that was a great plan to go through that door. Now back to this uh, colored panel. Rudy, would you like to try climbing back up and controlling it? I can give it a go. And uh, d- despite what the what the map looks like, there's no purple lines there. It's just, there's some energy that is just floating in the air, but it's not solid in any way. Uh, before I send Rudy on her way, I'm actually going to take my coin again and flip it into the energy field. It goes right through and lands on the floor with a ping, 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 ping. I send Houdini through. Houdini goes through. I guess we can Seems walk. You have uh, turned off the doorway. And I gotta walk through. I also walk through. Okay. Beyond is a large... Uh, beyond this chamber... Uh, is a very large um, chamber um, that has a large statue of an elven person on it. And what is strange about this room 
is that no matter which direction you look, the person isn't facing you. Somehow that's unsettling. Mm -hmm. I'm unsettled. Um, Does the statue, I go up to it, does it have any names or markings on it that we can see? Um, There is a plaque, but there are no words on the plaque. The wall, the great curved wall behind you, looking at it, it looks like there might have been a mural that was painted on this wall, a huge mural, but it's all flecked away. There's nothing there but ash. Hmm. Say we keep going. So this next doorway behaves in the is this next archway is the same as the last one. It is two pillars of uh, of the prismatic pillars. Again, they're all cut out, and you are able to pass through. Uh. Before before I go, I'm going to just quickly, um, as I'm walking by, I run my hand along the blank tablet on the statue. Okay. Cool. Good time. Yeah. It was fun. I enjoyed that. I got some dust on my finger. It was a good time. Carrying on. The next chamber is the same. There is another elven statue that from no matter what direction you you look at it in this room it does not face you and you cannot and no matter what you do you can cl- you, you, you can even physically climb on it and even when two of you are are from other dire- opposite directions neither of you can see its face there's something we haven't tried yet wilhelm yes do you have a mirror yes May I see it? Yes. Uh, I pull out my mirror and I hand it to Raph and I kind of curiously and, am yeah, standing with him to see what he sees. If you guys want to crowd around and I'm going to try to look at the statue through the mirror facing away from the statue. Okay. You place the mirror in front of the statue. Make an intelligent saving throw. Oh! <laughs> No, okay, so just, just for right. description, I, I'm facing away from the statue, but I'm looking at the mirror at yep. the statue. Yep, okay. make an intelligent saving throw. Uh-oh. Uh, I get a seven. <laughs> okay, you take uh, 15 points of psychic damage. Ow. Um, and you... Um, you just you tur- your skin just go like like you, you just tear pale. Your eyes become blacky ink in pits, and your blood starts flowing out of your ears and your nose and out of your eyes. And all you can do is sa- stand there silently screaming, and you are almost completely paralyzed in in, in place for about. Th- Three minutes. Uh, you drop the mirror and it shatters on the gr- <laughs> on the ground. What you you saw you saw actual nothing. Uh, when you say he screams silently, does he scream silently or does like he his scream mouth? Loud? His mouth is open. But oh. he's but there's no sound coming out, and, but his whole body is shaking and shuddering. I I'm like trying for those three minutes. I'm like trying to shake him and like wake him up and snap him out of it. It's it's. By the time you come to, I am like exhausted and sad and just like. Yeah. As you, yeah, you come to and I'm just like oh oh my, Raph, Raph. What did you see? You're, you're, we didn't hear you. I saw nothing. It was 
empty and it pulled everything out of my mind into it like a vacuum have you ever thought about what nothing actually looks like have you ever tried to picture what it looks like maybe you think of a clear window or a black space or a white featureless void but even that is something that's not nothing nothing would not even be that It hurt my brain. Don't do that. <laughs> well, Don't do what I did. Luckily, I have a few backup mirrors in my in my kit here. But uh, as the press to take the blood away, just being like, please don't try that again. My yeah. nose, out of my nose. Um, I'm a little worried now to try anything with these statues. But um, there's something we haven't tried yet. And I turn to the statue and I say, uh, in Elven, I say, hello. The statue does not respond. All right. That was my big idea. I don't know. Um, let's, let's keep wandering around. Let's see what else is out there. You know, uh, Rath, Rath you doing okay. You, it's been a heavy day for a lot of us. I I died think. twice. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Ointment has kept me alive. <laughs> oh. I'm wondering if... Uh... Moisturize. Always. Mm-hmm. Thus, once more, you come to a third such hall, passing again through the prismatic columns. Um, but this room, however, opens in a different shape, for there is a, a row of benches along a differently shaped wall leading further to the south from here. Progress. Oh. And same thing, no no uh, mm-hmm. name or anything on this statue? Yeah. Don't look at it. I may have to change my hypothesis. The control panel that you were working above, the off or the empty, may be the reason why these statues show us nothing. But also, the doors would be uh, assumed, perhaps blocked, if they weren't set to nothing. So, what is the purpose? These elven ruins are beyond me. (laughs) So, again, you come to a set of pillars that have these prismatic glass beads upon them that actually form a series of arches that you can pass through here in this hall there's another doorway this though made of the metal that you saw before the same greenish metal and the hallway then curves back around um in this direction as well so it curves back around but what you see in this chamber is something else entirely Looking through the uh, this area, you see a very, very large room that fills the entirety of the the last tower. This would be directly underneath the needle tower where the bolt of lightning struck you. This is an absolutely massive room. It is held up by four great pillars and again has three statues in alcoves observing it. The statues again do not face you uh, once before. There are eight braziers uh, set around that are not illuminated uh, and several stone benches almost like piers over top of what is a massive pool of shimmering purple water under which an intricate arcane pattern softly glows the water is maybe six inches deep uh are these also like passable currently Uh, yes they they they're they're currently passable i'm gonna walk into the room and as i look into the pool i'm gonna turn back to these two which one of you understands um Arcane sigils the best. I have no idea. Oh, 
this book can help me learn many languages, but the nature of arcane sigils is just beyond even the most powerful. <laughs> uh, I take a look at it. Do I have any idea what what the sigil might reference? I help you as chief magician. Are, are, are you trained in? Are any of you actually trained in the Arcana skill? No. 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 Then none of you have any cap- capability to identify what what this could possibly be, without without training in Arcana, what what this is, it it shimmers and shifts and the waves on the surface of this water move and ripple in impossible and contradictory ways. Hey, hey, Wilhelm, yes. toss your coin in into the pool, but then I can't get it back. It's been so useful. Always make another one. Ah. Uh. This is my lucky coin now. Um, I'm going to not throw my coin in, but can I find any like rubble or something that I can toss into the pool? There's actually no rubble in this room. Well, then I- pull We have a moment, can, my colleagues, my friends. We, we did discover some power through potentially identifying it. I wanna see, can I cast identify? Um, it will take some time, but I may be able to decipher what this pool is. Hmm. Uh, yeah. What will be the, the, uh, um, you want to cast the identify spell Mm -hmm. as a ritual. And I want to place my hand just gently on the top of the water. Okay. Uh, what's the casting the the total casting time for identify when you cast it as a ritual? Uh, ten minutes. Okay, it, identify is a one action cast. Uh, or sorry, eleven minutes. Okay, it's a, it's eleven minutes. Super. Um, you focus your energy on the spell and pull the magic into you as you touch the surface of the of this magical effect. This this thing is an extraordinarily powerful planar gateway. One that could be, if opened and powered, could open a stable uh, a stable gate between worlds in so, uh, perhaps perhaps even realities like not not like just bring people from like the other side of the planet but like bring people from the other side of possibility so i've seen nothing and then everything yeah, you can all roll a d6. Oh boy. I don't know if my brain can handle I any got a more. Six. <laughs> Five. Four. Okay. As the um, as the pool ripples uh, and and rustles uh, with all the various energies that are, uh, are pulled in as as wrath. Uh, examines it with the identify spell um you um Rudy you rolled a six I rolled a six oh you rolled a six will help give me a perception check all right uh, perception. 21 the door this door behind you is sliding open sorry which door this door behind you oh there's Just a door the angle. There. <laughs> yeah, I know I <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. that's why I rolled no perception. there's a door there I had I, no I, idea I point at it as it slides open and realize that I totally was so blown away by this pool that I didn't even acknowledge the door. Mm. Um, what you, uh, um, 
as as Wilhelm knows that, I'm gonna give one one more thing. Wrath, the last thing that you see, though, as you finish your identify spell, is this gateway operates on channels would be the best way to describe it. There is something that is not here that is trying to tune it to a specific channel. So it's shifting. And yeah. it seems like it's changing and whatever is doing it is doing it actively. Rule number 56, some doors are best left closed. And the <laughs> the doorway opens up and stepping out from it um, come uh, um, stepping out from the door first comes a sleek six-legged panther with long tendrils coming out from its shoulder blades and then a second and with them comes shortly after out out through the door and and as the as the panthers step into the room they flitter and flick and almost as they walk forward you see them walk forward again like a quick deja vu or you see them walk ahead and then walk back almost as if they're they're not quite in sync in time stepping out with as they growl for a moment you hear a voice say something in elven and it says stop no wait uh, in Elven, I respond, Who goes there? Um, you hear a response. Um, the, the, the response that comes back to you is, um, Is, is, is a is a indignant response of it's a again a phrase of elven words that basically mean you are on my property what are you doing here well uh this property belongs to the elves of long before us we have come to investigate what happened here if you are of the elves then we mean you no harm. But if you have taken this property by force or are trying to misuse it, Hmm. then we should have a frank discussion about your intentions. A man steps out wearing thin gray robes. His hair has fallen out, but he has long elven ears and eyes that are solid green. The features of this man are such that he looks like he might, like, like, he looks like so aged and wrinkled that it is remarkable that he is even standing on his own power. And yet, as you look at him, looking at the shape of his nose and his eyes and his jaw, this is the elf from the tablets. Rudy, what was the elf from the tablet's names? Uh, I, kn- was- I know his name. I know his name. Uh, I know his name too. Um. Oh. Uh. Voltar Boon- Bane Moon. Vol- Voltar. <laughs> I say his name. Voltar. Voltar Bane Moon. We have been searching for you for some time. We got your message. We yeah. Uh. Yeah. What? He, he, the the reply comes and it means it's it's very ancient elven and the reply basically comes the translation for you Wilhelm would be not only are you saying something that I don't understand it wouldn't even make any sense if you were saying if I did understand it I don't recognize that name and I don't know what you're talking about um, put the tablets down do we still have them, or does? Or maybe, maybe. No, I think you turned them over to River. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. 
Okay. Uh, do, do y'all remember what the tablet said? Any of the, the words? E- even Tide has brought survival. And I say that out loud. Like, say that to him in Elven. We're, we're I... on the search for Even Tide. And what has happened to the elves? Why are you here? I don't know. I'm just here to wait. How long have you been waiting? I don't know. How long has it been? We received messages from you that are ten that reference times ten thousand years ago. You did? And we have followed those messages. They were a warning. There was a series of messages. None of this makes sense to you. No. We mean you no no harm. Very well. Why? Where? You closed the... You... Where are the walls? He points the barrier. Uh, We shut them down in our investigation of this facility. You came from outside then? Yes. Oh. I have not been outside. I wonder what it's like. Ever? No. I have not been... Not that I know. Could he be not who he thinks he is? Is he like... He doesn't know how long he's been here. There's a pool there. Beautiful. How Uh, long were you in that room, sir? As long as I have been. Where Do you have any, oh, is Arcadia? Arcadia. Where is Arcadia? I don't know. Does the name sound familiar? Yes. I think that's where I used to live. What happened to Arcadia? We had to move. Is everyone else okay? There were... There were others. They left. I stayed. They went out. But I stayed. I don't know why I stayed. But they left. I think we can't... I think... Hmm. You have a name that we can call you. You called me... Valtar Banemoon. Yes? That is... You resemble the person who gave us a message. It was a recording in a series of recordings. You look like an older version of the person we saw in these messages. And... The name was Voltar Bane Moon, but those were ancient Mm. messages. But Mm. it it is to reason that you are also ancient, so it could have been you. That's perhaps. I've been here a long time, I think. What are your intentions here? My intentions here? Why were you waiting? I was waiting for something. I was waiting for... I was waiting so long I forgot what I was waiting for. Maybe I was waiting for you. We... We are... Just travelers. We do not mean you harm. If we find out why you were waiting, will you let us stay? Yes. Yes, that's fine. 
Do you know how to operate this building? Do you know its purposes and functions? I know how to make food. Are you hungry? Uh, As a matter of fact, I am. Unfortunately, that probably isn't top of the priority list, but good to know. Good to know. Okay. Please, if you- lead, lead the way. He leads you up the steps to another chamber that, it, that encompasses the whole tower, the, the whole level of the tower above. And you actually see the other side of the door um, that you tried to enter from the other side. And it on this side that door is ringed with the prismatic glass and he says the door showed up it was filled with light and then it wasn't and then I think I met you you did did you did you do that perhaps huh he leads you up another set of stairs one one more time um, into a small set of rooms um, that uh, that have the same kind of floating table that you saw before with the cubes around it and he he sits at the table and places his hands on the table and a bowl of porridge emerges on the table and he and a spoon and he says come eat if you're hungry I sit down and I eat not understanding any of the conversation replicate what he did what is the first piece of food that comes to your mind Uh, chicken salad a chicken salad shows up in your bowl I got a steak and I, I point, and I'm like, how, how did y'all, I'm sitting here eating, and I'm still eating the porridge. <laughs> how did y'all do that? I don't know. I can't tell anymore. I'm going to eat the, my porridge. The man says, well, maybe you know more than I do. And that's where we're going to end for the night. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? Where are we? So many more questions. Than what I, I should not have looked in that mirror. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, uh, such a mind bend. My brain is like mush right now. Yeah, that was wild. I don't know. This is weird. Everything's weird. <laughs> what a great place to stop. What? I, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, went into this session with a hundred questions, and I'm leaving with a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, th- that is where we will leave things for tonight. A big thank you uh, to our amazing players, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing. Uh, very interesting play tonight. <laughs> uh, and a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes and um, all of the fun that he gets to have with uh, watching us and monitoring chat and doing all the wonderful things he does. I miss Kyle. I guess I'm alive. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, I hope that you're there, Kyle, listening to me. And also <laughs> a huge thank you to Monty uh, for all of the hard work and this elaborate uh, sci fi fantasy dungeon that we are <laughs> lost and confused in. Um, okay. In our game tonight, we uh, we use a variety of incredible assets like the, uh, the maps. Uh, by Monty, produced by talented artists, and they have graciously given us their permission to use these in our stream games, and you can too in yours at home. So please, we encourage you to check out and support these amazing uh, creators. We have Roll20 Virtual Tabletop, the maps made by Monty uh, through Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft, based on cartography by Dyson Logos, player character artwork by Jeremy Cole, NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon, monster token artwork uh, from the D&D 5e Monster Manual, and other source books. We got spell effects tokens by gabriel picard and music by tabletop audio 
Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Deeds t-shirts, including Dusk Wardens, yes, 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 and way bigger than ducks. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. All righty. And, well, the videos that we create on our channel as well as our live streams are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our patreon supporters and we thank each and every one of you from the bottoms of our hearts if you enjoy the videos that we create here on youtube twitch and elsewhere please check us out on patreon you can join our awesome discord community at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes we also have a phenomenal discord community so that is exclusive to our patrons so if you do join us on patreon Patreon, make sure to hop into Discord where we chat about all sorts of nerdy topics. And that also includes monthly writers' rooms where you can come in and help Monty and I come up with our upcoming scripts for our show. And also, we do monthly QAs where patrons submit questions and we uh, answer those questions once a month. So, a lot of exciting stuff happening in the Discord. Join us there and have fun. Awesome. And of course, you can always check us out on YouTube as well at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. We got new videos coming every Thursday, every other Tuesday as well. So check that all out uh, as well. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch all of the previous episodes of this show and season one Dungeons of Drakenheim on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time in the shadows of Drakenheim.